what's going on guys welcome back to the trink and today we are going to be doing a pretty cool build that i've had planned for a pretty long time so we have a piano and next to it we have a small shelf that holds piano books but currently it is really too small for the space and doesn't really you know show any of the books or even store that many books and you'll see a picture of that at the end of the video uh, but to go ahead and get started here i'm actually just breaking down a sheet of plywood and this is a pretty good tip to use that i just started doing but if you actually put foam insulation, you can get a 4x8 foot sheet for about 20 bucks. If you put that under your plywood, it allows for a really even, secure surface to do any sort of uh, break, breaking down on. Uh, pretty, previously, I used to just lay it on beams, and that method is pretty bad. You're kind of balanced. It's sort of a balancing act, and you run the risk of you know the saw kicking out from underneath or maybe hitting the cement if you don't set the depth correctly. Um, but currently we are just breaking down the plywood sheets and getting some of the longer pieces taken care of. So the first major step of the build is creating a three quarter inch rabbit down the back side of the shelf, which you'll be seeing here in a second, but I actually currently don't have a three quarter inch rabbiting bit. And so what I'm going to be doing is sort of a dado setup on the router but actually just aligning it right on the edge so that it's actually just a three quarter inch rabbit. And a good way to do this, Dustin Penner actually shows this in one of his videos, but it's just to make this simple jig. And so what you can actually do is create a groove. So we have a 90 degree fence here. Um, and then we just create a groove here, matching our bit diameter, which is gonna be three quarter inch in this case. And once we have that, we basically have just created a simple jig that we can put up next to our workpiece and we know exactly where the bit's going to be entering the workpiece. And so in this case, since we're going to be rabbiting with it, I just align it such that it is right on the edge of the board. So with the start of the cut figured out, what I do is just find a long, uh, mostly flat. It turns out it wasn't really that flat or straight, but uh, just the longest piece of plywood I can find to use as a fence for my router and I line that up with the initial groove that I make and I go ahead and continue that rabbit all the way across each end. So if you want plans for this build I do have uh, free plans in the description and basically there's just drawings of each of the parts as well as an assembly file where you can take a look at how many pieces there are and kind of how they go together and just a couple useful building tips uh, that I found during this build. So what I'm doing here is just marking out locations for the dados and so there's going to be a series of dados that's actually going to be what's holding the shelves in and so what I'm doing is just evenly marking those out and this main, this main piece that you're looking at is actually going to be getting ripped down into four vertical strips, which are going to be the four uh, main supports for this entire shelf. And so I go ahead and just create these all on the sheet while it's still put together. And on top of that, I'm going to be marking for the dowel joinery, which I'm going to be using to connect the, um, each of the posts. And so I just mark those out and then I go ahead and rip this to four individual strips. That way you know that all your alignment's going to be exact. It would be a lot tougher to do this if you were working with four pieces that were all cut separately. So with the four vertical legs of the shelf completed, the next step was to start working on the dividers, which are going to be what's actually connecting each side. And so to do this, I go ahead and mark each piece, and then I just carefully cut that to the width. And then I go over to the table saw, and I just cut a bunch of spaces using a stop block. And then just to make sure that the joinery is all equal, I mark out for the dowel joints, and I go ahead and drill those out. Um, looking back, I would probably do two holes per face just to get a little more strength, but one ended up being, I mean, it works out just fine, but I think two would also help with alignment as one allows for a bit of twist or rotation of the spacer, two would just lock that into place a lot better. 
but I'm using the Rockler dowel joint jig and um, a tip that I find is to really use two clamps to clamp those down while you're drilling just because one you'll find that it's often moving around slightly while you try and drill out those those deep holes and uh, obviously that's going to throw off your joinery and so now I'm just going ahead and I'm cutting some dowels just from some 3 8 inch oak I think and then with those cut I go ahead and start applying edge banding to all the plywood pieces. The edge banding really gets rid of the plywood look and I was actually surprised with how realistic it made the pieces look. It kind of you know made it look a lot more professional and like it was actually done with hardwood. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that edge banding takes quite a while to apply and there's a lot of cleanup involved with it and so after you apply everything you have to go through with a razor or some sort of utility knife and just clean up all those edges. But you can see here the finished result that these spacers just look, they look a lot better than if you were to leave those plywood edges on. And then because of the order of operations I, that I did this, I actually just had to go back and clean out the bit of edge banding that was covering each dado. And finally, I just, once again, I'm trimming the edge banding, this time on the, the long legs of the shelf. And uh, you have to be careful here because sometimes, while you do have a guide edge to kind of trim the edge banding, sometimes I found that the blade would catch on those plywood sheets. Uh, obviously, the plywood is made of a bunch of stacked sheets, and they would actually start to cut into that, uh, which left pretty bad, uh, I don't want to say tear out, because it's not really tear out, but pretty bad reveals in a few spots. So. Going forward, I would just be extra careful when I'm doing the edge band trimming. You can also get some tools that help with this that would probably do a lot quicker and cleaner job. But finally, all the edge banding is applied. I just go ahead and knock off some of the rough edges on each of these blocks and uh, start getting ready for the glue up. And now it's time for the glue up. Uh, this is sort of always a stressful moment, but luckily the dowel joinery makes it pretty easy. But I go ahead and apply surplus glue on each of the faces that's going to be adhering. And then I just carefully mallet this on. It's a nice tight fit and it's going to be pretty, it's going to be very secure. Um, and then I just mallet that on and clean out all this glue squeeze out that I can beforehand because I find that. It's really tough to remove the glue after the fact, after it's dried, and anything that you don't get obviously really impacts the finish as you put that on because if you don't sand everything out, you're gonna the finish isn't gonna apply to that glue and you're gonna get a really ugly spot. So and now it's on to kind of one of the more exciting parts, which is the purple heart inlay that I'm gonna be doing. So as I was building this, I, I found some Purple Heart scraps and I was thinking that would really add a nice touch to this build. And so the first thing that I wanted to do is on the very top shelf, it, it's not going to actually be holding piano books because it's not tall enough. And so I thought, you know, there might be some sort of decor or something going there. And so I decided to do inlay. And so what I did is I just actually modeled and measured and printed, 3D printed these little spacers. Uh, which were exactly equal to the inlay plus two times the thickness of the um, router guide that I use. And that's a little hard to explain, but with Bosch routers, there's a guide that you use for um, inlay and you need to know the exact thickness of that. But I was able to get it pretty much dead on by measuring that with some calipers and then just three between the spacers. And I just used some CA glue to apply that template and just bring on the router. Now, I only have this huge, uh, like, three horsepower Bosch router, which is a little, little uh, heavy to use for an operation like this. It'd be much better to do with, like, a small palm router, but uh, luckily, I actually, it turned out just fine, save for a small nick in the center there, which we'll be dealing with in a second. But at this point, I just test fit the Purple Heart, and then I bring the Purple Heart inlay over to the drill press, which I just have a spindle sander on and I just carefully round those corners and I would just take off a little bit at a time and then check the fit with the inlay and I basically just went back and forth doing this until the purple heart got a perfect fit.
And once I got the fit that I wanted, I applied a little bit of glue and then just hammered in the purple heart and it went in with really good uh, resistance, which is just what you want for inlay like this. And if it hadn't been for that one nick that I got using the router, this actually would have been a very uh, pretty perfect inlay in my personal opinion. But uh, after it was done drying, I just take a hand plane and flush up the purple heart with the rest of the plywood, being sure not to plane any of the plywood because Again, you're just going to reveal that top layer and start showing the ugly plywood layers underneath. So you got to be careful when doing this. And with that inlay finish, I just start sanding all the components and get ready for the next sub-assembly, which is going to be attaching the sides to the main backing here. So here's a nice little tip I like to do for occasions where I get these small gaps. If you just put, a lot of people use a bit of wood glue in sawdust, but I find that the wood glue will again affect your finish. And so if you use something like an, a little bit of CA glue with some sawdust, you can see that it does a really good job covering up that small gap. Um, you can really hardly see it in the final look. And with that patched, I just go ahead and attach each of the sides to the back being careful to make sure that everything's square as I don't want any sort of um, you know misalignment when I'm trying to size the shelves. So I just take my time with this glue up and really clamp it down and leave it for a sufficient amount of time to completely dry and cure. So here we can see sort of the carcass of the shelf and so the last step is to size each shelf and get those made. So before I actually do that, I do flush up the back with each of the sides as there was a little bit of overlap from those, um, those makeshift rabbits that I did. And so I just use a flush trim bit on the router to do this. Now at this point, although I'm sure the design was plenty sturdy, because this thing is going to be taking a lot of weight, I did decide to reinforce with some screws going in from the back into each of the sides. And I didn't want to actually screw heads on the back just because um, I, didn't, I didn't want it to kind of ruin the look. And so what I did is just first drilled a wire hole that would accept a 3 8 inch dowel. And then within that, I went ahead and drilled the pilot hole for the screw. I would then put the screws in as normal and then I was able to come in after with some dowels and plug each of those and that made a really nice finished look. It didn't take away from the sort of handmade feel and um, you can see the screws are really really hidden down in there and then they're completely invisible as soon as I go in with the dowels. And once again, the, the finished look that the plug dowels leave is uh, pretty nice. Uh, and so I, I really liked how this turned out. And as usual, I just went back through and gave everything a sort of intermittent sanding just because it's easier to do it as you go. Um, so the last step now is to start making each of the shelves. And here I am just planing down the Purple Heart, some more Purple Heart scraps, which I'm going to be using for a bit of trim on the front of the shelves, again to just to help accent the entire shelf as a whole. And I just am using some half inch scraps that I had of more plywood and I'm just carefully measuring each one and cutting them to size as there was slight misalignment going from the top to the bottom. Uh, and so I just paid careful attention to size each shelf to get that, you know, that sort of drop in resistance fit that you want. So with each of the shelves uh, cut out, the next part was to just rip down the Purple Heart trim to the appropriate width, which is a half inch in this case. I then went ahead and just cut each one to the 
width of the shelf and the reason I didn't do this all in one kind of one go with the stop block is again because each of those shelves were you know maybe a, somewhere between a 32nd and a 16th of an inch different as you go from top to bottom and so I just sized each of the trims differently to match as well and instead of gluing this on and clamping it I, I, I wanted to kind of just get it going at this point and so I just used some CA glue uh, but here you can see the shelves just temporarily set in there with the Purple Heart fronts and you can see it with the inlay there it's giving a really nice look at this point I was really starting to get excited about how this thing was going to start turning out and so with all the components completed I now begin the final sanding for everything and so I hit everything up to 220 and I come in with some just some block sanding blocks and go over all the edges and make sure it's all cleaned up and with everything sanded down I start with some mineral spirits and a rag just to get rid of any sawdust that's left which uh, there is lots of sawdust left so make sure you do this or hit, hit it with some tack cloth and then I go ahead and start putting some polyurethane on and I actually only had this really old can of polyurethane so it was really thick and it was not applying well but I wanted to use it up just because you know I had it and I wanted to get some of it out before I threw it away and so I just keep applying the polyurethane I think I went up to about four coats on pretty much everything and it honestly could have taken more coats and obviously I was doing uh, high grit sandpaper between each coat but I ended up stopping because I was just ready to get this project in the house and put it in place because uh, it was going to be really useful holding up all these books we've got and so I just finish up with the polyurethane and then this thing was ready to go the shelves didn't even get glued in because they were plenty sturdy with just the friction fit and there's really no reason to glue in place just because they're they're only holding up piano books um, so with the finish on and dried uh, this project was completed so check out the plans below if you want to build something like it it was a really enjoyable project I, I really love how the purple heart uh, accent and inlay turned out here you can see the final assembly with that uh, the purple heart just gave it a really nice look that I don't think it would have had with just the plywood so as always, thanks for watching guys, be sure to stay tuned for more videos, and we'll see you guys on the next one.